Right, so today I'm back with Tom. Um, we're going to be talking about a topic that I think gets a lot of bad press, and I think rightly so, because I think a lot of people do it in a wrong way. But like law of attraction, manifestation, again, a lot of people think of like long-haired hippies that are just kind of doing nothing, which often is, is the case with this stuff. But I think Tom and I were talking around this because I think when you visualize something, I think visualization is a very powerful technique because everything exists in your head first. And I always give the example of like Steve Jobs. The iPhone was created twice. First, it was created as something in his head, right? And then obviously it became an actual physical product. So without him visualizing that, having an idea about it, it didn't become a physical product, but he had to do a load of work and he had to be really passionate about it to make it happen. And I think you and I were just talking about a lot of people read about law of attraction, do visualization, but then they don't take the action. The action is a really important part. So once you've actually created your dream life, some people call it like the 2.0 life, the future self that you want to be. I know Joe Dispenza goes into this a lot, right? You still need to take the action to become that person, right? So, and I think I was, we've obviously talked about this before because I lived in Colombia for three years. Tom's been living in Colombia for a long time. We're both from the UK. And a lot of our friends said, oh, it was like really brave of you to like go and live out there, not because of safety or anything like that, but oh, to move from your life in London where you're like secure, et cetera. And that a lot of these friends we're talking about, they're not happy and they've visualized this life of, oh, I want to live abroad. I want to live in Spain, whatever it is, but then they don't take action. So the action is the really key part. Yeah, for sure. Um, so many people just stay there and, you know, so many people don't, you know, visualize and read the books or whatever. And you don't need to read the books to visualize, but um, there's huge power, exactly as you talked about and Steve Jobs in in having that vision of where you wanna be, you know, with with my, my good friend and business partner, we have a goal to create the biggest natural reserve in Colombia. I visualized it, thousands of acres of rainforest and flowing water and animals and birds amongst many other things that's just one of the key goals but the big difference is we don't just visualize and talk we've gone and do it we're currently protecting 600 hectare acres of rainforest 20 water sources we planted over 3,000 trees and we haven't even begun and where the big gap is for so many people is for me as one in that taking action but two in just lying to themselves you know, visualization saying, oh, I'm amazing, everything's great. And yes, there's some truth in that um, in itself, but then you have to back it up with actually doing things to yeah. make it happen instead of just following someone's theory that you've probably followed in the wrong way anyway. Yeah, what do you mean by lying to yourself though? I don't know if you can give like an example. Right? Um, so I have, I don't want to name names, <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody, cl you know, relatively close to me who's always reading all the books, always saying how amazing everything is. Oh, my life, you know, sort of, for example, The Secret or is, is a famous manifestation book. Yeah. I think there are some great takeaways from that. But this person, you know, uses all the speaking in the future. Oh, I have, I, I love my job. I have so much money and all these terms and all these feelings of like things are incredible but then you look at her life and you look at her energy and you look at her expression and the day to day and going through things yeah. and it's clear that actually everything she's saying is a big lie because it's been happening for so much yeah, time yeah. and nothing's changed so Sometimes we have bad days. This is where I differ a bit from the secret what example. There's nothing wrong with feeling a bit shit here or there yeah, and yeah. being down and living those darknesses because that's where you get to the peak. So just be a bit more honest with it all. That's my take. Yeah, 100%. And I also think sometimes with law of attraction, manifestation, visualization, whatever we want to call this thing, of essentially really all it is is like, mapping out your dream in a way your future dream self right your future dream life job whatever it is and i, I talked about this a lot with uh, jeremy connell Waite. that's one of the most um popular podcasts we've had but when when you're going through this process so he actually went through a process where he designed his dream job and now he's got that dream job but what he did and what you have to do is you have to get very specific because you can come in with a very big idea of like you know i want to be an astronaut right or i want to 
uh, have all this acres in Colombia, but then you've got to work backwards from that. And what are the small steps that are going to get you there? Because that's the actions, right? The big dream thing is that's great, but what are the small steps that are going to get you to that action? I think that's probably the mistake people make. And maybe like with the example of the, the woman you're talking about, is she's not thought what are the small steps that I can actually, t I can do tomorrow, right? And yeah. then after I've done those things tomorrow and they're completed, what are the things that I can do after? So a lot of it is just really that that action of the very specific things that you can do right now. Yeah, for sure. And that action, you know, I talk a lot about comes down to that decision, but that real decision that I'm actually going for this and I'm going to go and create it and then, yeah, backing it up with the words. Because I, I had I, I had the vision ball. I don't I haven't had one in ages actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I on my bedroom wall I did it in just hundreds of photos, some of my actual life that I you know, memories yeah. that I always want to live and some of I used to stick like rivers and amazing mountains and trees in the background of where I want to live. And now actually I go five years on where well, that's what I'm creating. Um so yeah and how did we go about doing that it's just a random series of events that happened to get this piece of land in the middle of nowhere that we had but that those random series of events happen because we're constantly moving and and taking action and meeting people to slowly get towards there it doesn't always have to be some linear like mapped yeah. out thing but move towards it and also it's like, it's a process, not a goal as well. I think it was Kawan Glover who we had on the show. And he's he's a very interesting guy because he's had like multiple strokes, brain surgeries. And he was a guy in his early twenties at uni. And he talked about being like anti-victim culture. And if, he, if anyone had the right to be a victim, it was this guy. But he was like, kind of gratitude was a big thing for him. But the, the reason I'm talking about him, he talked about having aims versus goals. Because he said, if you have aims, you never really reach the top, right? Whereas if you have goals, it's like, okay, once I've got the goal, what's going to happen, right? So it's yeah. a bit like with your situation, it's not just, oh, I want to have this big retreat. But it's like, I want to live there and I want to be in this. And it's, so I think that's important as well as like, don't, if you're setting a, this dream situation, if you're like trying to manifest, visualize something, don't just think of it as like this thing that you get to think of it as like a lifestyle choice where you actually really enjoy the process of doing it. And I think that's really important. And when, even when we had Will Aitken on the show, he was talking around for him, he just really enjoyed the process of content creation. It was never about getting likes and stuff. And that was just a, a side effect. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, well, maybe talk about it, talk about your example now, because I've, I've just gone through one area where I've used visualization and manifestation and back to that. I know this podcast could be an example. But. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've, I I started a business, which which is interesting because I don't really feel like I manifested the business in itself. Like it had, so I run a sales training business and the business happened very organically. It wasn't like one day to the next. I was like, I want to create a sales training business. And what I realized is sales is really just helping people communicate better. And I'm very passionate about that because I think, a lot of problems, wars, etc., in the world come from like lack of communication. So that's made me more passionate about my job. But within that, there's been small visualizations I've had where I'm like, I really want to work with this client and eventually we do work with them. And I think a lot of visualization manifestation goes a lot into sales because as you said, a lot of people are like, I want to make loads of money, right? That's yeah. like a manifestation thing, but that's like a really bad one versus like, I really want to work with this client because I know they've got a big problem and I know we can help them. And I know their sales team are communicating terribly because they're trying to sell me and they're doing it in a really bad way. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to target this. I'm going to visualize working with them, making these people happy, but then I'm also going to put in the work. I'm going to put in all the steps and I'm going to be rejected a lot of times because as you said, with the darkness, that's what people don't realize. If you really want to get to the top, yeah. it's going to be 99% getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back before you actually make it to the top. So that's definitely been my case. And, and I've never had like a big overarching visualization. It's been more small steps. And then with this, the podcast, there's still a, a lot more things that I want to do with this podcast and I want it to be huge. But for me, the first step was just doing it. And I'd like to think, and you've seen this editing, right? the podcast is in a much better place than it was when I started like nine months ago. Obviously we're in this really nice studio now, so it's like a process. And I know that 
things get better more and more as as time goes on so yes i visualized hey i, I want to do this podcast and then it's just doing it right yeah exactly and yeah as you say the sales training consultancy it wasn't that you wrote it on your board and you yeah. wanted it. it it came organically because you moved forwards and you kept learning and you kept messing up and you kept doing things right and yeah. here we are today and it's it's successful same with the podcast and it's just about combining for me anyway it's about combining that visualization with action and then being honest about it yeah and where you're going yeah and with um the episode i was talking about with jeremy connell where he talked about ikigai which is something you can look up i can't remember the exact four pillars but it's like what you can get paid for uh what you love um what you enjoy doing and what you're actually good at so it's like putting all of those things together so if you are visualizing you also got to be like realistic about yeah. some of these things because if you're getting knocked back over and over again for something you don't like you're probably not going to continue doing it so that passion is really important but then it's also important that you are able to make money from it as well and that you do actually like doing it and you love the process because if you don't so all those things are actually really important yeah and you know people often you know the money is often a big thing especially in in you know we're in london now quite close to the city uh, the center and you know there's a lot of people just wanting to yeah get to the top of the financial ladder yeah. um but yeah i think what people realize when if that's all their visualizing is when they get to the top well all the things they missed in between and was that yeah. really worth it so that's why icky guy and what jeremy was talking about is i've never actually used it myself i know many people who have i understand understand it and i think those just four pillars and the big venn diagram is actually if somebody's a bit lost for mapping out um, yeah. and visualizing i think it's a really good place to go yeah and it's interesting what we were just talking about with action because i was just thinking around now with both of our journeys and what we were talking about around like a lot of people who live in london earning lots of money it's not necessarily they want to move away from london and have i don't know a villa in spain and live there forever but it's more just they've lived in London or the UK their whole life and they, they've got that dream of even living abroad for a year or two, wherever, even sometimes it's a city, some of them live in New York, but they never do it. And a lot of the steps is literally just booking a flight and taking a step on the plane. Because like when I moved to Columbia, um, as an example, I didn't actually have work. I didn't know what, what I wanted to do, but I had been working very hard for four or five years before that. So I had quite a lot of money saved up. I knew Columbia was cheap. And I was just like, you get a three month visa there without working. So I was like, I'm gonna go there for three months and see what happens. And eventually, you know, this sales training business I run now, I ended up actually working in a company in the um, in Columbia that was like an American company. And I learned a lot of the things that I do now. So it wasn't really, I never thought I would end up having, I guess more of like a corporate job in, in Columbia, but that's what happened. Um, so, and that all happened just from taking that step, like taking the step on the plane. And then what's crazy about the story with Tom is Tom had lived in Columbia before I did. And I called him, we, we had a chat about two things. We had the chat around not drinking because Tom quit drinking before I did. And I also was like, I've been to Columbia for two weeks on holiday, but I've not lived there. What, what's it gonna be like? And then six months later, Tom called me and it was fortunate because my last company was hiring. So, but Tom, he still needed to take that step on the plane. He still needed to do that, right? So I think often it's just literally a, a, that small step is gonna lead to other things. Yeah, it's exactly, you know, when you were working, I remember speaking to you when I was in London and we talked about a job opening this company, we ended up, company had going, we ended up working together and it was probably only two months between that conversation to when yeah. I was in the Columbia in the office, so. Yeah. I even think, obviously, you you called me, right? And I even think sometimes people people don't even pick up. They're like, oh, I should contact that person, but they don't. Like, yeah. it's just like, sometimes even just like picking up the phone or like sending it. Sometimes people are just very lazy. And it's like, yeah, you're visualizing living in Columbia, visualizing doing that, but take action. That's the important part, right? Yeah. And then there's, there's talk, I talk a lot about the snowball effect. When you do take action, action breeds action. But when yeah. you try and visualize and then you do nothing to back it up, you stop believing yourself and who you are. Yeah. Because if you said, well, I'm going to have this, I don't know, amazing job in in two years time. And then in two years time, you don't have it. Well, next time you say that you know that last time you lied and well this your yeah. word loses its power so yeah 
Hundred percent. Yeah, we got this. Um, funny, you were just referring to a, a book before, but we got a book there called Atomic Habits, which is very much what you're saying, and it's small things. So I talk about uh, say in the gym in the morning, like if you leave the habit of you leave your gym stuff like on the couch or like next to your bed, suddenly you're going to see it in the morning, and psychologically you're going to be like, I'm going to go to the gym, versus you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm a little bit tired. So it's very small details like that. It's a snowball effect, as you said. It's just like by booking your plane somewhere, suddenly you're there, right? And it's, even if we were talking about the corporate ladder before, even if that's the thing you do want, you do want to get to the job, ask your boss for that promotion. Often yeah. people are just scared to ask for that. So. Yeah. You know, another thing is just the daily habits that you talk about. I actually saw, I always watch Joe Rogan, but he mm. was saying the other day, it's not that difficult to have a great day. You just need to get up and do do the simple things right. Get up yeah. and eat, a, do some exercise, eat a good breakfast, have a nice conversation. And then from there, it's very difficult. Yeah, life, of course, life happens and we can all have bad days. But if you're doing that every day, you're mostly going to have good days. So obviously we've been talking about this topic that's a little bit woo, as we say. And uh, that's why often I don't like talking about law of attraction or manifestation because I feel like people are going to see me as one of those people like who's talking about <laughs> this stuff. Uh, but there is, it can be very positive as we were talking about if you if you take action. But yeah, if you're, Tom, if, you, uh, if you're in a situation now, obviously you really like what you're doing at the moment. But if it was maybe five years ago, you're in London. Even that call when you gave it to me in Columbia, let's say I said no, right? I don't have any work for you. I'm leaving Columbia. I'm getting out, Tom, right? And then you're like, okay, what am I going to do? What would your process be? What, how would you like visualize what you wanted to do? You mentioned a vision board before, but like what would be your process? Um, yeah, I, I, I love that. When I, I used to do it a lot, as I say, I've kind of got my life going where I wanted, so I've, I've left it behind a little, but actually just pull all the photos together. It's like the old cliche, most obvious one, but it did help me map out where I want to go. Okay, you don't have photos or a printer, but you want to do it now. Just get the notepad out, write free things, but not free tangible kind of thing, not just make more money, but actually yeah, yeah. free things you really care about. And then for afterwards, after each action, free steps or free concrete things you can do this second, or if it yeah. has to wait until you know you've finished work or the, tonight, say when you by when i'm gonna do x thing and just do it and then you'll be amazed at how those little steps build up to something far far bigger yeah i think that's the key thing is the action which we've been talking about today so yeah that's the main thing if you're visualizing something that you really want in your life think of i think that's great advice from tom think what are three things the i would say one of the things was one of the things you can literally do right now and then what are three things you can do in the next week? And then there's going to be that snowball effect, the, the atomic habits uh, that we were talking about before. So if anyone you know is at a crossroads in their life, share this uh, podcast with them. And uh, yeah, please subscribe to us on YouTube across podcast platforms. And we'll see you on the next episode of The Cosmic Ridge.